Ashley Fickle and Greg Powers are recruiting insider here at Dave Campbell's Texas Football, coming to you from the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Studios, where we're going to do a special little s recruiting segment here, this time focusing on uh, Powers, those guys right there to your right on the 62nd edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football, the Texas A&M Aggies. And we wanted to come in here and do this because – Talk about some commitments that are coming in to A&M, specifically on the defensive side of the ball. We've got our defensive guys on the cover right there, but three new massive commits to the defensive side of the ball. What are What's going on down there in Aggieland? It just seems like recruiting has just been so uh, fast and furious as the – you know, the evaluation period, the first evaluation period in a while kind of came to an end. Mm -hmm. Texas A&M did a great job getting out of the gates with uh, big-time commitments from quarterback Connor Wigman, you know, wide receiver Noah Thomas, big offensive tackle Hunter Erb from Hazlitt Eaton. So on the offensive side of the ball, things seem to happen early. Gosh, I would be remiss if I didn't even say the number one tight end in the state, <laughs> Donovan Green. I yep. mean, but you can see that they were really – uh, aggressive early as it came to offensive commits but over the last few commitments we've seen them focus in on the defensive side of the football and the first guy that pulled a trigger was the Woodlands linebacker Martrell Harris a guy who's super athletic and has an extremely high upside firmly cemented as a DCTF four-star guy and, and that's because he brings so much to the table and he has so much athleticism. Mm -hmm. They followed that up um, with a commitment from Jared Kerr. And Kerr pulled the trigger, I mean, literally 24 hours after we spoke with him at the Texas State 7-on-7 championships. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that he was down to two, Baylor and Texas A&M. Uh, but he's also one of these guys who's a two-way high school star. He's a great running back in addition to being a great safety. Mm -hmm. But when speaking with him, he made it clear that defense was going to be his focus moving forward and one thing I found really interesting about what he was looking for in a college was that he wanted to pick a program that was going to win mm -hmm. and he really put the focus on wanting to come into a winning program and helping them not only take the next step steps to compete within their conference he wants to help lead texas a&m to a national championship and those are the type of guys you need he's a great kid i mean he kind of everybody you spoke with at lexington high school where he plays um just talked about how uh, solid he is off the field but man when you watch his highlight tape on the field he's really special it's going to be hard getting that football <laughs> out of his hands but he's a little bit of a headhunter uh, on the defensive side of the ball. I'm really just going to assume that he just fell in love with the heat and humidity at 7-on-7. Seven <laughs> seven. He's like, this is it. This is where I want to be. <laughs> in, all fairness, in all fairness, out of all the 7-on-7 seven seven events that we went to, it uh -huh. was hot. It's always hot in College Station but not for this as event. Hot? But it was not as hot. All we right. had a breeze on two out of the three days, and I think our high was like 97. <laughs> We've been there plenty of times where it was over – 100 degrees. It's because Mallory and I were there. They were being nice. There you go. Mother Nature was being nice. nice. <laughs> the last guy who they pulled in a commitment from is Ish Harris from Pilot Point, another mm -hmm. small school star. And I think this one is really intriguing because, uh, you know, they have him listed as a linebacker recruit. Right. He's a guy who's another one of these athletes that can do multiple things on the football field. Is he quick enough to remain at safety and will he add the size at six foot three six foot four in that 195 200 pound range to bulk up and play linebacker we've touched on this a few different times uh as we've covered recruiting and done recruiting segments here on texas football today about how the sec conference has begun to change a little bit mm -hmm. and that it's not just a uh, rugged smash you in the mouth type of conference now right those you, car crash positions right you need guys like ish harris to cover space yes and so i think that the uh i think that there is a strong chance that he does end up moving inside the box but he's the versatile guy not just a guy that's like seeking out ball carriers he's covering receivers down the field matching up with slots and he can provide provide you some versatility on your defense now i want to go back to something you kind of mentioned at the beginning we started off by noticing a whole lot of those offensive juggernauts that a m was picking up on the commitment trail then you talk to a guy like jared kerr and he says i want to go to a program that wins we know that in order to be successful in any football program but especially especially in the sec you cannot have just an offense you have to have two complete 11-man units out there on the field 
where does these – what do these commitments on the defensive side put A&M at a national ranking? Because obviously we think very highly of them. I think undisputed they're probably the number one team in Texas right now. How does this look from a national scope? Well, it's interesting that you point out because if – you know, the the one go-to I think when you, t- you want to look at – national recruiting rankings because I always check out the 24-7 sports composite because mm-hmm. they kind of take all of the rankings from all the various services, dump them into one category and um, give you maybe like a bigger picture look at it. And right now they're checking in at number seven, wow. one spot behind Texas. Hmm. So that's very interesting. There's some inter- – <laughs> Yeah. You know, there, so there's some interesting recruiting battles. I think it was the commitment from Jamarion Miller that pushed Texas, you mm-hmm. know, slightly ahead of Texas A&M. But uh, balance is what I look at. Texas A&M, by far and away, had the number one recruiting class in 2021. Mm -hmm. And now when you look at their commitment list, when you factor in the latest three commitments, they have ten commitments, five on offense, five on defense. When you throw these three guys in with Malik Silla, um, you know, one of the top-rated defensive ends from Katie, and Bobby Taylor Jr., one of the top-rated defensive backs also from Katie, um, you can see that they're bringing in at both sides and they have space to add talent right. as well. They're still in the mix for some of, you know, the the state's top guys, some of the nation's top guys. They were really busy on the re- on the recruiting trail in June mm-hmm. and I think people noticed what they were doing. I, I kind of give a shout out to their creative team or their creative department yeah. there because they really caught my eye with all of their social media edits the and pictures yeah, were Yeah, the awesome. pictures were amazing coming out of there. So I think that they're really doing a good job of capitalizing on a top five finish on the field last mm-hmm. year, the number one recruiting recruiting class in Texas last year, and they're parlaying that success heading into the 2021 season. And I think a big thing with those pictures and the social media, too, you've got to consider is the fact that there was none of that for so long. Right. These players couldn't actually go to these colleges. They couldn't take the official visits. So when you get there, you want those awesome pictures to be able to share and say, I can go now. I can go check these out. I, <laughs> I love them because, y- you know, it – one, it gives you, as, as a recruiting analyst, when prospects takes, take visits, you know, I'm a very much watch what they do, don't listen to what they say mm-hmm. type of guy as it comes to recruiting. So you know that they're taking visits and these are the schools that they're really interested in. As someone who follows it, that's very interesting. But just because we didn't have tons of opportunities to evaluate these mm-hmm. guys, you can see how their bodies have morphed and changed right. over uh, <laughs> like the last year. You know, there were some guys even out at the Texas State 7-on-7, seven seven, and I'll mention a couple of guys from Garland, mm-hmm. Jordan Hudson and Chase Biddle. These guys have added like 25 pounds of Going like pure into muscle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can see how some of these guys change. And even Texas A&M commit Donovan Green. Mm-hmm. You know, we have him listed at 220 pounds, I believe, 6'4", 220. He's added some weight, you know, to that mm-hmm. frame. And he's that is going to benefit him as he heads into college because he's going to have to be bigger to take on defensive ends as a true – if he wants to play a true inline right. tight end position – and he's probably at least 235 right now. I mean, I didn't ask him what his updated weight was, but he's at least 235 right now, and he retained all of his athleticism. So, I mean, that's good news for Texas a fans as well. And you, like the professional Capital J journalist you are, led me perfectly into my next question when you said um, you're a guy who likes to focus on what they do rather than what they say. Obviously, you can look at your world focuses on what athletes do as they get to the college level. You look at the composite scores. You do all that. But ultimately, so what? They're, they're one recruiting class under Texas. What happens is when they get to campus, this player development, where do they go once they step foot on Kyle Field? And so with all of these commitments, the, the offensive ones beforehand, the defensive hot streak that A&M is on, where do they go from here? Well, they're they're in on a number of big guys. I mean, the number one of our five stars, Denver Harris, is still strongly considering Texas A and M. Some guys who I feel like they they have a really good shot at. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to start there. I I think they stand in a really good space right now with uh, Harold Perkins, four star linebacker from Cy Park. I think that Texas A and M is in a commanding position for him right now. He almost pulled the trigger on a commitment this week and now it looks like he's going to announce his decision you know around the all-american game where he's set to play in january Mm -hmm. Uh, but i think if he would have 
committed it would have been to Texas A&M. Right. So I think that that's a, a, a player that they feel really good about. Mm-hmm. And, and t- let's just call it what it is. They do a great job recruiting Houston. And oh, another yeah. Houston area guy who I would be surprised if he doesn't end up at Texas A&M is big offensive line lineman Cameron Dewberry. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he, a monster. <laughs> he's a road grading type of, uh, type of lineman. And he's taken some elite visits, right? Mm-hmm. He's been – considering some of the top schools in the country but it would be a surprise to me if they don't land an offensive lineman from humble Tascacita. and you you have to when that when Houston is in your backyard that's where A&M can take the cake over the other SEC schools of going come right up the road guess who gets to watch you your family all that those are the commitments that they can't miss on I agree with you 100 percent and another guy who I think that they have to be optimistic about because he decommitted from Georgia is the number one rated defensive tackle in the state, Bear Alexander. Mm-hmm. And, you know, out of these guys that we're talking about, we're talking about positions two out of the three in the trenches. And we know how important that is in the SEC. Uh, Bear is a guy who we watched him play in the state championship game. He's dominating at the point of, point of attack. Mm-hmm. He has unusual size and athleticism, things that you can't coach. And could one day, if things develop right, be that next Texas A&M defensive lineman if he picks the Aggies Mm -hmm. to be called on NFL draft day. The one intriguing one to me, I mean, they're they're in on a lot of top guys. You know, they still have space. (laughs) We can just keep talking and talking. (laughs) But the one that's intriguing, really intriguing to me, is Summer Creek offensive lineman Kelvin Banks. Yes. And this is one We've seen him in person many times, and whew. The footwork on that guy. He's a DCTF five-star. He was the second-name five-star in the 2022 recruiting cycle for us. He's a guy that we really feel um, will be a difference maker at the collegiate level. You know, he's the guy that will, could be an All-American. I think he compares favorably to Kenyon Green, who they also signed from Humble with Tascacita a couple years ago, in the fact that he could be an offensive tackle, but he could also very easily slide inside and play guard without missing a beat. He could be elite at either position. And it seems like the recruiting experts are a bit torn on where he's going to end up. Will it be Texas A&M or will it be Texas? This is like a traditional recruiting battle. And I think you can put Bryce Anderson, uh, Beaumont Westbrook safety, kind of in that same mix. Mm -hmm. The one-time LSU commitment took an official visit to Texas, took an official visit to Texas A&M, and took an official visit to Alabama. So those are the three schools that I think are strongly in the mix for his signature, and and we'll see what happens. He was supposed to announce his commitment on July 4th, but has postponed that because he does want to take his final two official visits and make sure that he's making a, a sound decision. So instead of committing this upcoming weekend he's going to be pushing that decision back a little bit but Texas A&M really in a good spot with some of the state's mm-hmm. elite absolutely those those three big defensive commitments again Montrell Harris Jared Kerr and Ish Harris all coming down this week and we're assuming plenty more to come he's Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete you can follow him at G Powers Scout on Twitter and Next Level D1 and of course see all of his fine work at texasfootball.com slash recruiting Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at texasfootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out texasfootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at texasfootball.com slash subscribe.